we... Ah! Whoa! Ah! <laughs> what the f... Oh. <gasps> oh my gosh! Alright. Oh, Jesus! Oh, f that worked! <laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe. Daniel, can I offer you a nice, delicious... Ah! This may very well be the most important episode we've ever done in the history of the channel. Ever? Yes. Anybody's had <laughs> enough uh, whiskey purchases, going through some collections, they've been in the scenario where they go to experience a delicious pour. Yes. And the cap breaks off. Yes. And you got this, the cork stuck in there. So a few different situations, a few different yeah, methods. I will kill everybody. <laughs> but one thing I want to start with, this has been done with wine corks? I haven't been able to see video of it being done with- Are you with... talking about heating this thing? Yes. Let's start this. We have a bunch of bottles with stuck corks. This is our Stunt Laphroaig. Got the cork that's in there. Best I can tell, you're supposed to heat this. So give it like a nice rotation. Yeah, and we're gonna do this for about a minute. I feel like this would be better with a blowtorch, but it might heat up the glass too fast. I have one, but this is a more accessible thing. Yeah, I'm not buying it. I'm not seeing any movement whatsoever. So, you're not thinking this method is viable? No, I don't think so. Fail! Yeah. That was a good episode, you guys. Like and subscribe! All right, well maybe we circle back and we see what it takes to make it viable. We... Ah! Whoa! <laughs> what the f... <laughs> Let's try the next method, because here's like... Well, corkscrew is the obvious one. Why don't we start with corkscrew? Because you start with the good shit. Daniel, so just treat it like a wine bottle. The thing is because the cork is so much smaller, right. it so, does not take much to shove one of these things down inside of a bottle. So let's try on the right. balconus here. It's a short stubby cork. Yeah, so the trick I've discovered on these is dig it in first and then turn the bottle into it because you can control the pressure at first. Uh, yeah, you're all the way through. All the way through. All right, you ready? Yep. What? Oh, lovely. Because maybe you don't. But have, maybe you don't have. Maybe a wine you cork. don't have a wine cork because uh, you drink whiskey and you want a camping trip. So this method, I don't know, man. So basically, a screw. A oh yeah, a screw to screwdriver. We've done this on broken bunk heads. Yeah. Yeah. But you got. Oh oh oh. Gentle. I got, I got it. Gentle. You don't want to push the cork in there. Yeah. But you Just also, like the corks, this is a corkscrew method. But you also need to have enough pressure pushing in so you can get a bite. So if you're a manly man, you don't have a corkscrew, but you've got screws on your camping trip, is what you're saying? And a screwdriver? Where does this camping scenario come from? It's camping. That's when I've had bottles break off and not figured out how to get it out. Uh, and I was trying to think of the last time that happened to me. Okay. I just pulled that out with my finger. That's super easy. If this is really stuck in there, mm -hmm. then you can just get a fork. Oh, and yeah, to pry it up. Yeah, and then you use yeah. a fork as a lever to pull it up there. That makes sense. So, a corkscrew and a little, 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 little screwdriver. If you're at home, right. there's all kinds of options. Yeah. But on a camping trip with no tools, that's when I opened up a bottle, had the top come off and think, well, shit. We had to shove the cork down inside the bottle because we had, we couldn't, we okay. couldn't get it out. I could have easily accidentally pushed that cork inside the bottle. Right. What happens if you're trying to fish it out and you can you do that? Out? Right. You got this right here. Now this, this is a bit trickier. All right, so I'm gonna try and do, use a couple of things. I haven't done this before. This is a zip tie method? A zip tie. Okay. And basically what you wanna try and do is go this, put that in there and then pull Oh, it. and then boom, okay. Right. This, is uh, packing straps. You know, like the straps you'll have around like a box. It's Easier to. And it's very flexible. Okay. So we'll see how this does. And oh, again. it's not bad. Yeah, we're trying to get. But you need to get to the other side of it, right? So maybe, oh. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that worked. Wow. So much better than I thought it was that going to. That really good. <laughs> so this is just the bullshit strap material from wow. baggages. You want to try it with That's the zip tie? A, yeah. Okay. Can I? That was kind of impressive. And you need a significant amount of whiskey in the bottle to really, I think that wider thing is a real deal. Yeah. Oh, oh I think you got it. 
Nice! Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's strangely satisfying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've had problems with the tower where I've spent too much time thinking about this. Um, if you're in a really janky situation, wow. you could possibly do this with like a shoestring. Okay. But then you're getting like shoestrings down your whiskey. Cloth. So ideally you'll have like a zip. I guess it depends on where you've been hiking that day. This looks like a MacGyver situation well, here. This is, this is basically if you're ready to kill the bottle. Okay. Because oftentimes if you'll have a cork down in here, mm -hmm. Uh, every time you try and pour, it stops the cork. The yeah, the liquid brings the cork up to right. the, the neck, and then it just stops it up. So, straw just far enough to keep that out of the way. Okay. Right, and then you bend it over and tape the straw in place. Right. Well, because you're creating an air gap too. Yeah, you're you're forcing that cork to stay out of the way. So a straw taped to the side, creating keeps, an... keeps the cork out of the way. You pour yeah. whatever you want. That's if your bottle's gonna get killed anyway. Yeah, but you don't wanna leave that cork in there. It will f up a whiskey. There's two different types of whiskey bottle seals. There's mm -hmm. usually natural cork or synthetic cork. Yeah. Sometimes you'll get like a screw cap. Yeah. But uh, I am partial to some type of cork. It just feels better, it sounds better, it feels more like a whiskey experience. I'm partial to synthetic cork specifically. Yeah. Because why harvest the real cork and why have it potentially rot or dry out or create problems when synthetic cork exists. Cork is a natural material, so mm -hmm. just to make sure that we're getting this extremely accurate. Cork is formed from the bark of the cork oak tree. Yeah. These are trees predominantly found in Mediterranean countries, such as Spain and Portugal. Once maturity has been reached, specially trained cork harvesters- It's hardcore. Will begin to strip the bark using an ax. Yeah, and it's, I've watched it. It's, it's te technique, man. It's yeah. all technique, it's impressive. There's actually another method that um, I tried it out yesterday. I didn't think it was gonna work. All right. Oh, Jesus! Oh, that worked! <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah, yeah. That was amazing! <laughs> uh, yeah, just smash it on something, you'll be fine. <laughs> That's so man of bar. Can you imagine? Give me the whole bottle. Wham! So, so right. obviously don't smash it against like concrete or anything really yeah, soft. Yeah, that was a soft wood. Yeah, like wood, um, a tree, bar, something like that. And then most people are like putting it inside of shoes. How are you gonna get? Well, because they're creating that that barrier. Yeah, most people are doing this. Yeah. And then I saw like this fancy wine guy just going to town. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't getting the impact. Uh. So at a certain point, just own it and try not to cut yourself and bleed out in front of your friends. Unlike wine bottles, you don't store whiskey bottles on their side usually. Why is that? Because the alcohol content will eat the cork. Yeah. It's, the proof is too high. No, that's um, not the But issue. you do want to keep it wet periodically because if it dries out, you have the opposite problem. Yeah, so occasionally just uh, tip it over and then you know little, let it moisten, but don't let it live there. Right. Now that's not an issue with synthetic corks. Right. Synthetic corks, you can keep them. Yeah, and you could store the synthetic cork bottles, like wine bottles on their side if you wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One of the most helpful things that you can do for yourself is whenever you finish a whiskey, throw away the bottle, but keep a collection of the corks. Oh yes, I have that. Here, right here actually. Look. A collection of corks. Uh, because corks do come in different All shapes and sizes. So whenever you have something that's broken, you can replace it. Name that whiskey. Uh, it's monkey, monkey shoulder. shoulder. <laughs> Name that whiskey. Uh, is that a Highland Park? What is that? Yep, Highland Park. It's guess who this is? I don't can't. Uh, One guess. <laughs> it says Lafroy. Nailed it. He's learning. Nailed it. It's a proud of you, baby bird. Jim Beam is just so much better than Lafroy, right, guys? Right? Have you tried Fireball? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, guys? <laughs> so let's go out and do the things that need to be outside because... Danger! Hello. We here at the Whiskey Tribe wanted to take a moment to go on record and say, from the bottom of our hearts, we're sorry. A few weeks ago, we endorsed a product known as Magic Spoon citing the cereals impressive protein, extremely low carbs, and zero sugar. After further review and several attempts at sorcery, fortune telling, and ritual sacrifice, we must concede that Magic Spoon cereal is not in fact magic. It is only delicious and surprisingly healthy. We are sorry to have implied anything other than me.
From the depths he appears! Who disturbs my tasty meditation? Oh, great spoon lord! It is I! Beauty Moot, you dare summon the spoon lord? By what right? By the right of flavor! Great spoon lord! I find your sacrifice. Well, it. Name your crime. A vision of the future. Very well. In the days to come, there shall be a great battle. Two new champions shall clash for the mantle of the ultimate deliciousness. The peanut butter barbarian, master of all nut butters. The cinnamon slayer, the spicy naughty boy. As we speak, both feast upon the sweet ambrosia known as Magic Spoon, hoarding its power, biding the time until the flavor war ushers the end of days. Can nothing be done to stop it? Prepare yourself, Tiny Mooch. Order your own Magic Spoon, and I shall reveal unto you the secrets of healthy, delicious flavor to gird your loins for the battles to come. So saith I. Magic Spoon, now available in cinnamon and peanut butter. Build your own custom box at magicspoon.com and use code WHISKEY for $5 off. All right, we're outside and we're doing some stuff with cork removal. What do you got? Ooh, savory. Ceremonial. So the Saber. saber method, like you go to like fancy places, it's a champagne bottle. Yes. And there's a technique, there's a method you're about to show us. Well, <laughs> well good, good. I've never done it before. All right, we've never <laughs> done it before. Also, champagne bottles, they got a big fat They've got a big fat. To connect, and yeah. also it's under pressure, yeah. which is helping to want to push. So we'll see, man. I don't think it's going to work. I don't what know, do I'm, I'm just standing over here. So the, the so, goal is to have as little spillage as possible. Actually, to get the thing off would be a good start. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely certain it's hey, gonna come off. Hey, don't let go of that because I'm over here, just in your, in your. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, no Dude. way! Butter smooth. Wow, that actually worked. That was really like I knew it would. <laughs> <laughs> that was a clean break. Oh yeah, below the cork. So a lot of people don't necessarily have a champagne saber, but if you use like a big kitchen knife. Backwards. Backwards so you don't damage the blade. Right. So in the research we were doing for different methods, I actually found a thing. It's a cork retriever. So if, worst case scenario, you have a cork down inside. Wait, wait, I got one for you right here. Of a bottle. Then this is a cork retriever. I got you one. <laughs> <laughs> you got two now. The threshold of functionality is, is this better than our shipping tie, the zip tie. Yeah, method. that was fast. That was so good and easy. So we'll see. This is like a $10 thing off of Amazon. And I've never used it before, but you basically just fish the cork and you got it. I'm just gonna sit down for a second. Okay. So and then oh. That was a lot of fussing about. Oh, did you want to try the method with the banging? Not yet. I'm not ready for it. But I will try the uh, <laughs> the hot and heated up method. <laughs> You're not ready for it? No, no. He's not ready to bang? <laughs> I'm not ready to bang. I gotta work up to that kind of thing. I really don't want to hold this. Jeez, you really would have thought it would have made a difference by now. Yeah. Honestly, I think at this point, there's better methods than just trying to heat up the Yeah, thing. we've changed the color in that. This is the same one we heated last time. Can we try one of these ones with a cork stick in it? Sure. What if it's just the bottle? What if we just set the cork on fire? It's already Lafroig. They're not going to know any difference. Right. Just making it more Lafroig. Taste it. We... Oh! Whoa! Oh! <laughs> what the f... <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing! That went all the way over the roof! <laughs> that was awesome! Honestly, the bonk method is my favorite method so far. Yeah, just because it's so efficient. 
Yeah, well, you want to get a little bit more aggressive about not spilling whiskey, but that was good. Banging it on the wall is pretty manly, but I feel like there's got to be a more manly way. Well, uh, like I, oh. zip ties. Hold and on. Let's do the manliest thing. Hello. Hi. Hi, you want this? He's an axe guy. Sometimes. And also a whiskey vault editor. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, we have a whiskey with a stuck cork yeah. waiting for us. All right, so Fancy Dan, uh, we did an episode last year. Mm -hmm. We had some axe throwing involved. Mm -hmm. I would like to think of this as your redemption story arc, mm. because as we clearly saw, mm -hmm. I, what's the word? Oh! 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 Step into it. Oh! Dominated? I don't know. I dominated I don't, I don't know you, about it. I don't and know. you were a league master. You know, and that was the first time there. I dominated you. You know, I didn't I'm mean to embarrass to, uh... you. I didn't mean to embarrass you, but I wanted to give you another opportunity to redeem yourself. But unfortunately, uh -huh. we were practicing before this. There is a clip. Now, this this is an inauspicious start for your redemption arc. Do you think what are you, you talking can? About? Did you see Dude. the trick shots? Did you? I went full <laughs> turbo. Yeah, yeah. What do we say? You first? You talk a lot. Oh, am I trying? How, how far away am I supposed <laughs> to be? Just stay behind this Coach. Uh, Probably about like right here. Step right. into it. Damn it! Hey. He hit it! He did it. I didn't even get the throw! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>